Hey guys, Ken Sunny Seven Two One Seven One, doing another trucking video today. Um, Euro Truck Simulator Two, gonna pick up a load here. This is gonna be a longer one, so we're gonna pick up this wind turbine. I was gonna do the boat because uh, it pays like double, um, but it's more miles, and uh, this one is maybe to a more interesting location as well, and it's a different. I haven't done a wind turbine before, so we're going to take that job. And where the hell is the... Ah, of course, the parking space is right there. That'll be fun. This parking lot was like, turn left and immediately turn left. Get in here. Totally at the wrong. Not the greatest angle to pull into this lot, but we'll make it work. For all of this is a European truck. A lot better turning radius. So that's what it looks like. It was about 21 tons, something like that. Yeah, I came in from over there to the right in here. Like, turn left. Immediately turn left. You can't drive through those golden X's right there. Turn right. Turn right. I tell you, I get used to American Truck Simulator, and I tend to go wide when I don't need to. And then when I drive this for a while, and I go back to ATS. At the roundabout, take the second exit. Truck doesn't turn as well as I expected. Exit now. Um. Get ready to turn right. Probably ought to do is um, turn right. Go in and look at some of the settings and write down the number. Just the um, steering response settings in this game seem better. So I ought to go in and copy the uh, settings over and try that out.
blue truck up there was in the wrong lane. Oh, it combines. And the AI vehicles did not know what to do. Real drivers generally don't know what to do. <laughs> At the roundabout, take the first exit. They've never heard of a zipper merge or how it's supposed to work. Exit now. saw that in the video, I don't know, it was sometimes a little bit of a stutter um, when it loads a different part of the map, I don't know. It's a little annoying when it does it. Sometimes it happens at a awkward moment. Really affect the gameplay like it doesn't. That you can react to the sudden stutter and it causes you problems. Um, best I can figure out, it's probably because the uh, Steam library is on a mechanical hard drive. I really need to get like a M.2 transfer all the game data over probably run a lot better, but, you know, budget for right now. Shit, that's way too fast. Seven there, and it feels a little, a little fast. So I think I'm going to drop it down to 45 and just relax a bit. guys. It's about two in the morning, real time for me. I've already recorded two of these, two or three of these drives today. I'm going to start scheduling them, though, so I may do the drive, upload it to YouTube, and then schedule it to release. I think I'm going to do Fridays video releases. Maybe do two, two games a week. Maybe one from ATS and one from PTS.
just me, guys, or does it seem way too fast for this road? attention to the speed limit on the road itself because that's for cars. Why do they keep flashing? spot monitor made me aware of it and then I saw him come on dude make the pass I wonder if your flash would be to tell me there's a cop up here because my high beams are not on now like this definitely increase your stress level just a little bit. I mean the truck handles it just fine. The um, realistic game physics mod that I installed also really increased the um, body movement of the truck. It's a bit more bouncy. Cap moves around a bit more. Guys, let me get around this corner and we're going to get to the 15 minute mark. back guys let's just take, take a look at our route here so we're actually going up into Poland looks we'll be on this side road for a while and then I guess that's an interstate I don't know I want to say it was kind of interesting it's a new place I've never been before so
but on the high beams, they should be automatic and go on and off like they're supposed to with the oncoming cars. It's a pretty tough place to pass in a blind corner. Yet again, something that actual vehicles do. Jesus Christ. Go straight on. Hey, car, you had the right of way. See how the cab is like hopping right there? I started doing that after I did that uh, realistic physics mod. Keep left, and then continue straight on. The roads, you'll notice it going around on ramps. Go and, straight on. And off ramps. Um, that they aren't really smooth curves. They're more like short segments of straight road stuck together. And I think the same is true with the up and down movement, up and down position of the roadway. Um, I'm sure we've all driven on roads that were concrete block underneath and the segments are not always perfectly aligned so you end up with this sort of this da dump you know da dump da dump you know as you as you hit the bridge as you hit the road pieces and um, I think that's the case in the game in a few places especially up on ramps like that 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 um, Um, you know, the cab just starts hopping up and down quite a bit. I like the European signs there, how that is the name of the city in a white, on a white sign. And then as you exit the town, it has the name of the town again with a red line diagonally across it. Which I guess means like, you know, leaving that town. It's a neat way to do it. cars actually have them yet. I know the Tesla Model 3, the new one, I think it's capable of it. Go straight on. 
seen a few European cars do some crazy stuff with those. It was like Audi and it can project, you know, the brand Audi out on this, out of to a wall. Do like the light display, it's pretty wild. It's a super awesome technology. You can run high beams, but then they turn off just around the car in front of you or the car coming towards you. So you can see what the high beams are on, but you're not blinding anybody. It's a really awesome tech from what I've seen. The U.S. is so far behind in lighting technology, you know, the rules about having, you know, side mirrors instead of cameras. Our government, the DOT is, that's Department of Transportation. Um, it's pretty slow to change. Having them flash high beam and low beam on and off like that is freaking annoying. An annoying to me. Transmission's definitely a little spastic on its gear changes. I have the engine brake turned on, so when you get off the throttle, it um, emergency flashers went on because of the sudden braking. I've never driven a real automatic transmission truck, so <laughs> maybe that's how it really is. I don't know. A lot of times, though, it'll it'll go from you know, it'll go up a gear, and then you give it just a little bit more throttle, and it'll go right back down again. Really, what it should do is just stay in the same gear. Wow. Driver Roel there just had a $20,000 load complete. My uh, company drivers are, in this game are starting to build up their skill levels and get bigger. Uh, bigger uh, jobs. That's where you really start to build your income is when your company drivers build up their skills and start doing those $20,000 deliveries. And um, in American Truck Simulator, I've got uh, probably 50 drivers. 
so this starts to add up pretty quick. You know, each day we've got quite a bit of income happening. Which, you know, then lets you buy more garages and buy more trucks and hire more drivers. And, um, the um, pay for the loads is definitely not realistic relative to real truck. But I think if they made it realistic on the pay, you, you know, it would take it 10 years <laughs> to have enough money to buy a truck. It, it just wouldn't work. Nobody would play the game. I think there's a mod on the Steam Workshop um, to add, like, realistic economies into the game. would significantly increase the, dis the difficulty. I saw a guy post on the Steam, one of the Steam groups. Um, somebody was asking about, you know, what kind of truck should I get my company drivers, what kind of trailers, and that kind of thing. Um, this guy, he was, I think it was European Truck Simulator. Um, uh, he said he had 500 drivers and was bringing in like 28 million euros per day something like that and at this point for him the game it, the wealth just builds no matter what he does so you know, he just goes out and buys cool trucks and customizes them and drives them around and, and that becomes sort of a part, fun part of the game for him is just being able to buy whatever truck you want and play with it. Drive it for a little while. You can always put it into your fleet and then hire drivers to drive them. So it's not a waste. You can also then sell them buy something else. But you take a pretty big loss when you buy and sell stuff. Well, go straight on. See, I thought we were going to hit that truck, so it turned on the flashers. Okay, guys, we're almost at 15 minutes again. So I'm going to go pause uh, right here. The next sequence we should get it there because we only have 89 miles to go. Alright guys, be back in a minute. Okay guys, we're back. Should be at the delivery pretty soon. That'll be it for this trip. I'm going to buy the um, this uh, screen recorder. Seems to be doing a pretty good job. Um, it's handling the 60 frames per second that I set it at. And um, seems to do a pretty good job. So um, I had like a yearly or you can buy it, you know, forever subscription. It was like $25 for forever and maybe $9 a year, something like $6 a year, I don't remember. Keep left, and then turn left. Uh, turn left. You gotta be careful when you're turning your head like that and then turning, you can lose sight of that side and run into the wall on the other side of the truck. Go straight on. Turn 
right. Get ready to turn left. Turn left. Had a total brain fart and looking at that miles to go. Must, I, I don't know. I think it was like five miles, and then all of a sudden it says 84, and I'm like, I knew that was, I knew it was 90 something to begin with. I don't know. I'm getting tired in real life here, guys. Be the last one I record for tonight. I almost didn't do this one. recording it's not really difficult it's just got to pause it every 15 minutes and I think if I paid for the uh, keep right paid for the full the unlocked version um, it gets rid of the watermark which I don't really mind the watermark it's right in the middle it's kind of doesn't really bother the roundabout, take the second exit it doesn't really bother anything um, uh, I now. think it removes the 15 minutes um, limitation. Uh, although, honestly, it isn't really that big of a deal because um, I load up my video editor. I mean, the, the one advantage would be that I could just upload the whole video from directly from the computer to YouTube without having to put it in a video editor and go through that process. Um, but the nice thing with the video editor, because of the way that it saves the files, um, I just, let's say that this video is going to have, I think, three individual sequences. I just drag all three into the video editor, just tell it to open all three. It puts them in order and sticks them in there and puts them right up against one another. And I don't really have to edit any pieces out because I just hit pause in the game and pause on the recorder at the same time, or nearly. So I don't really have to actually edit the video. I just stick them together. You know, it's a couple seconds pause and um, then I just but then I do have to you know it has to do its thing and encode it that takes time so if it, if it could um, just do it in one giant you know 30 or 40 minute video it would be a little easier the negative could be uh, I think you guys watched that video I just did of the uh, the heavy haul in ATS for the first time, I had the game actually crash, and I lost a few seconds, maybe a minute or two, of um, a video, and so that would be the bad part. Is you imagine if you're like you're driving on a 500 mile trip with you guys, and you know three minutes from the destination, the game crashes. If that whole video file is lost, that would really suck. Um, Whereas breaking it into 15 minutes, I mean, I guess the worst case would be you'd lose 15 minutes of, of video. Um, I don't know. It might be enough to ruin the video anyway. Um, the game, when it crashed, it actually, you know, it does auto-save every once in a while. So I didn't lose the, the, uh, the trip in that case. It just reverted back to the last known location. I also don't know whether there could be a file size limitation for how much it could write contiguously, you know, um, in one big video file. The 15 minutes could be like a file size limitation. And 
if that's if the only thing that really changes is it gets rid of the watermark. Honestly, I don't really care about the watermark that much. I don't really actually mind advertising the screen recorder program. It does a good job. It's easy to set up. There's no ads or anything with it. Um, it's easy to use. So, you know, why not give them the recognition for um, a decent a quality product? be able to make it to the delivery. Um, of this video sequence. We're about eight minutes in. This was definitely not the best paying load. I picked it mostly because it was an interesting cargo that I have not done before and an interesting location I've not driven to before. Um, the best paying loads in the game are the uh, yachts. Um, and the pay varies dramatically with the location. Get I've seen some that right. were almost $100,000 and I'm not that far into the game yet. Uh, as your skill level goes up, the pay for the right. loads goes up dramatically. I've noticed is some of the really good paying loads are they go into Great Britain, which can be kind of challenging, especially with traffic. Driving on the other side of the road it's kind of a pain in the butt. And the navigation does some even weirder stuff in Great Britain. It doesn't declare the exits quite the same way. It'll just say keep left instead of exit to the left. It's a little weird. So I tend to avoid trips into Great Britain just because of that. Go straight on. Through the night. Get ready to turn left. It's now 3:30 in the morning, coming up on sunrise. Turn left. Yeah. See, that's what I was talking about. When you you turn your head to the left, you you lose your positional awareness a little bit. When you're driving a truck in real life, it's not really an issue. You know? But in the game, it's uh, a little harder. At least for me. Keep right, and then turn right. It'd be really cool to have like a three monitor setup. Turn right. But I don't think I could do it do screen recorder that way. Turn left. Finally, we are here. Just a standard parking spot.
first. They want you to put it right between the other two trailers. So it's fine. screwing that up. Although I did need it to go that way a bit. At this point. Should be able to see the trailer. I find parking this way the easiest. It's what you do in real life. Look down the side of the trailer and um, you're driving, looking behind you, either in the mirror or in real life, the way I was taught it is, turn the steering wheel towards trouble. So if I was too close to this trailer here, you would turn the wheel that way, towards the trouble, and it'll make the trailer go the other direction. Good timing. 13 and a half minutes in, 14 minutes in. All right, guys. you'll get to see here. So I went up to the next level, so then you hit continue, and then you can choose where uh, you want to apply that. And I'm going to do it under fragile cargo because there's a lot more fragile cargo. Ooh, yum. Hazardous cargo is not such a common thing, at least not that I'm carrying regularly, but like that wind turbine, the, the yachts, and some of the other high paying loads are all like that. So, all right, guys, that'll be it. Um, you guys have a wonderful evening. Ken's 97, still 171, signing off. And you guys be safe out there.